Bu çocuk. Para da bastı. Just don't lose your mind and we'll be okay. It's too late. Like that ship is sailed long ago. Welcome to Meanwhile at the Castle podcast. I'm Queen Emily. I'm Queen Deborah. And we are queens of our castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. It is episode 59, and today is December 11th. And welcome to our podcast. We're almost to episode 60. Which will be a miracle. It will be. <laughs> We've been doing this for four years and only 60 episodes. Well, that's <laughs> more than one a month if you average it out. Because 60 episodes is, you know... As we just were yep. saying a minute ago, five dozen. So, you know, it's it's Pretty good. okay. We're the tortoise and the hare. Slow and steady wins the I don't know podcast races. Podcast race, but whatever it is. <laughs> Slow and steady makes fifty nine podcasts <laughs> for over four years. There you go. <laughs> so today we're going to be doing a little life update. Then we'll be sharing our works in progress. Oh, we'll start start with our finished objects, our works in progress. We'll have a kindnesses like sugar segment and then a little bit of shop news and just general chit chat about all of our projects. Mostly, I think we're mostly knitting, right? This I think time. so. So anyway, we are in a new room. Yes. My to be so festive? Well, yes. And my sewing room is Christmas right now. We just want to be festive. We don't that, to that's it. That's it. <laughs> you don't need to let everybody know that your room is so full you can't open the door. <laughs> it's not like that actually. But you know how, I don't know if you guys are like this, but for us in our house, my room is the Christmas room. So that yeah. means that every present that we're hiding and every, the wrapping paper and projects that are in progress and things are all in there. And so it just, that's, that's up, exactly what happens. Takes up all the space. But I have my tiny little Christmas tree. It literally has three ornaments on it. It's what like are the three ornaments? Big. There's one, who gave it to me? So that had an E on it. Oh, that was me. Oh, that was you. So there's the one from you. And then last year, um, my friend Pat Curtis made me this adorable little cross-stitched mouse that's on a sleigh. Oh, I don't And so that's on that. there. That's and then I have a wool felt snowflake. <laughs> And then it filled it up because the tree is literally that big. Anyway. And that filled the tree. Yes. And I have your little snowman that you yes, made me yes. last year. That was so cute. And um, a candle. So I've got my little like Christmas area. It's fun. I love it. So all I need is my TV. I turn on my fake fire on the TV. And then I can sit down there happily forever and work on projects. We went for Thanksgiving to California. Um, to see Jason's before. father. Thank you. <laughs> but we stayed in a uh, separate house. And um, in California, in the area that we were staying in, I mean, it's fire zone. So there's no, I mean, there's fireplaces, but in the fireplace is a fake fire that doesn't mm. put out any warmth. It's mm. a, um, It's like logs with lights. And then there's a speaker that crackles. But it's so convincing that I kept finding myself standing by hoping to warm up and I didn't ever warm up. So it's like your your TV, you know, you're, yep. you're like, oh, it has the mood, but I'm not any warmer. So. Well, and our air quality has not been good here, which <sighs> means that we're not allowed to have fires. Um, we can only have a you know wood burning fire on days where the air quality is good and so it's so bad right now I was saying you could chew it well it's and that's so why my voice sounds like this <laughs> and that's so why we're kind of gravelly walked out the door because we have what's called a thermal inversion mm -hmm. in we live in a valley so warmer surrounded by mountains high mountains yeah warmer mm -hmm. denser air will trap in the less dense colder air so you have a thermal inversion which traps in pollutants so yeah, walked it's not out the grand. door and I was like, "Whoa, you can barely." I mean, it's just it's gross. It's kind of the worst thing. Like everything else about living here, it's we don't get beautiful. tornadoes, we don't get hurricanes. Well, we get earthquakes. That's kind of lame, but we just we're protected from a lot of things. But not that. Not that. And that usually starts in January. It's but been early. we're supposed to have um, snow like four days in the next ten days, so and that, that will, will clear be it really out. helpful. Yeah, because we just it's been so dry. Anyway, but because of that, I've been turning on the fake YouTube fire yeah. <laughs> and um, my husband's been doing, um, we do a family read aloud 
And we have like um, a book of stories where you read one every day for Countdown to Christmas. And um, then we're also reading a Christmas Carol. And so he'll sit by, sit downstairs to read to us. I turn on the fake fire. And actually, nice. it feels like it helps. It feels, it feels yeah. cozy, <laughs> even with just that. Okay, this is going to irritate me. Notifications on my phone. I thought I had it all off. <laughs> oh, it's because it's calendar, which means... Since it's synced and I have like 17 email accounts, I get a notification on every email. Oh, that's so <laughs> because, frustrating. And so I'll have like eight pop up at one after another after another. <laughs> it drives me crazy. I could fix it. But, but why would I do that? <laughs> but why would you fix it when you enjoy it so much to be able to talk about irritations, right? That's what I think. <laughs> Oh, oh, goodness. Here we so, are, but let's see. I mean, we haven't really been talking about life update. You went to California. You went to California, and it was lovely because I did absolutely nothing. That is lovely. I So, you know, vacations are usually more work, and you have to come home and recover from the vacation. No. This one was bliss. Oh. Did nothing at all. My kids were stir crazy and I told them we're going out in the middle of nowhere where there's no people, there's nothing to do, nothing to see. We're going to see grandparents the end, you know, for a little bit each day. So take whatever it is that you want to do because that's what we're going to do. I made sure they knew that long beforehand. I even reminded them right before, like, do you have things to do? Because once we get there, I don't care if you're bored <laughs> because I have everything I need. I have a fake fire. <laughs> I have food. I have a warm bath. Oh, luxurious bathtub. Ooh. I have my knitting. I have reading. I have a cozy bed for naps. That's all I need. Well, you have Jason too. That's also Jason a kept reminding me that. Remember that I'm part of it. <laughs> I was so content oh. to do. No I like. I am a person that likes to be occupied like with if you know productive things mm -hmm. to do and I realized that I need time to have nothing to do and it was great so. well and even then in your nothing to do then you are creative in that nothing space but you can do it at your own pace and in your own way I just I'm like I'm gonna do whatever I feel like doing I did a puzzle that was nice that is nice so, I was telling we we finished painting our family room and um we're still Oh, we're still in the process of figuring out the carpet thing, but that we got that done. And all of a sudden I realized, okay, our heroic youth stuff is done. Wedding stuff is done. The funeral stuff is done. The advent, like make, you know, sending out advents, all that is done. The painting is done. Holy cow. I can just settle in. And Richard said, and I thought this was so cute. He goes, you can settle in for a long winter's knit. And I was like, <laughs> Yes, that is what I want to do. I just want to do nothing but just yep. cozy home things <laughs> and knit whenever I want for as long as I want. I have had, you won't believe it when you see the pile, but not a lot of knitting time. <laughs> but it's been a while. So yeah, yeah. I started um, a Christmas vlog. So over on my Fairy Tale Chronicles a YouTube channel. So I've been doing that. That's been fun. But just enjoying the season. Yeah. Enjoying every day. Oh, it's just the best. I just, I think we all just need it this year, don't we? Everybody has started decorating early, listening to Christmas mm -hmm. music early. You know, everybody is just looking forward to something to look forward to. <laughs> Even Richard, who totally shocked me with this because he does not like to start listening to Christmas music early. We were jokingly sending, we have this little family chat and we, my kids love memes. So it all becomes memes. And somebody sent a meme about being, you know, a Grinch at Christmas time and not allowing people to listen to Christmas music. Mm -hmm. And he sent back a bunch of memes about like, um, maybe that's me normally, but this year it's 2020 and we're like, what? We can listen to Christmas music early. <laughs> we got so yeah. excited. Day after Halloween, I turned it on. Oh. I never do that out of respect for my family, but none of them said anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's, we have a friend whose family does a, a new playlist every month. Every family member yes. chooses a song for their uh, big family playlist. So 
they kind of think, well, this what is what is perfect for this month? What am I feel? You know, like happy uh -huh. songs to help you cheer up when you're having a hard time or whatever. So what song would you put on your December playlist? I'm going to ask that. Yes. So put it down below. No links, just the name and the the, the artist, artist and the song. Um, but yeah, put that down below. We may even create. Ooh, that would be a, so fun. A playlist on Spotify. I did that the last list. year for my advent. I had a playlist for my um, advent calendar because it was all based on Christmas music. Mm -hmm. And I loved that. That was so fun. What would you put on your playlist? Oh, uh, <laughs> I have two all-time favorite Christmas songs. And I can't even say Sissel. One is by Sissel. <clears throat> and I can't even pronounce it. Actually, I do love In the Bleak Midwinter, that one. Mm. And Carol of the Bells. Mm. <sighs> Hallelujah chorus. Yeah, I know. It's so hard to choose. Hard to choose one, but I'll yes. choose one and you choose one. What would okay. you choose? Okay. It's between the Wexford Carol by the King's Singers and When My Heart Finds Christmas by Harry Connick Jr. Oh, that's I think a good it's one. that one. It's like the most romantic. I don't know. It's such it's yeah. like sappy yeah. levels of romantic, which I normally is not my thing, but you know, at Christmas, you can totally go there. But Wexford I love, Carol. I love the Wexford Carol by the King Singers, that version. Yeah. Oh, but you know what? I found a new one, which is called All Is Well by Jordan Smith, I want to say. He was, um, he won one of the seasons of The Voice. I think it's that one, All Is Well. Yes, Jordan Smith. That is so good. That's the one I would pick. That's the one I would okay, pick. Okay, so... Put your suggestions below, and I will create our um, podcast December Spotify playlist. Fantastic. Um, and then I'll share it in our Facebook group. So if you um, are not a member of our Facebook group, go and join that, and I will make sure to post that playlist over there so that you can find it. Okay. Super fun. I love this idea. And I'll post it down below in our YouTube channel as well, but I won't be able to post that until we have created it. That would so. make sense. Okay. Fabulous. How fun. All right. Let's, let's move on to finished yeah. objects. <laughs> we both got a stack, but I think your stack is a little bigger than my stack. So <laughs> why don't you go first? And that way I can also figure out what I'm going to cast on here. Okay. Let me pull. I got to get my sock. Fixed. I have piles, literally <laughs> amount. That's what happens at Christmas time, isn't it? Yep. Okay. So I showed you on our last podcast, this hat that I knit for my daughter for Christmas. And I wrote up the pattern for it. It has a nice texture to it. And what I like is um, how, so, okay, I wanna explain space dyed yarn. <laughs> Somebody was asking me, what is space dyed yarn? So there's different terms. I mean, it is a um, variegated mm -hmm. colorway. But if you open up hand dyed yarn, it's in a big loop that's called the hank. And if there are spaces, sections that are dyed, you know, a color in big chunks instead of just speckled throughout, kind of blended throughout, if it's in chunks like that, that's space dyed yarn. And if you use that to knit hats, a lot of the times it will swirl. And this one I used fingering white yarn held double and I pulled from the inside and the outside of the cake at the same time. Um, and then I just made sure to line the colors up when I started. Um, pretty close, not 100% because I like it to not be perfect, but that's how you get this. So I wrote up the pattern and it's called the ice cream swirl hat. And that's on my Etsy shop. And so I knit that, knit that one, and then I knit another one for a Christmas gift. I just knit the ribbing longer so it could fold up and did the same type of thing where it swirls up the hat. And the yarn I used for this one was a really special set from um, Amy that she dyed for me and this was from it was her dandelion and dogwood yarn on her perfect sock base but she named it Deborah so it came with the main color weight this is all I have left and then two uh, minis and I'm gonna hold on to these minis for something else but look at that beautiful um, charm the progress keeper oh there's three 
For some reason, I thought it was one. No, it's two. I added yours on there, Emily, because <laughs> I was <laughs> using yours when I had this out. Um, so the pom-pom was from Fabu Knits, three Fs on Etsy and on Instagram, my favorite pom-pom maker. I talk about her all the time. Now I can gift this. All of these were like, we have to record so we yes. can finally wrap the gifts <laughs> and give them to those recipients that need them. So oh, wait. I have to cast on a few more stitches. <laughs> 29, okay. 30. None of us will talk, don't worry. 33, 34, there we go, thank you. <laughs> we all respect the counting. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know, when like, your kids start to talk to you and or you something, count, you louder. count out loud so that they know I'm not answering you yet. <laughs> yeah. I love your, your hat. And so I love it so much that I made one. And I did this one with a speckle. It's not a space dyed skein. And um, it's just a really good speckly one. This is from Fine Fish Yarns. And I'm hold it closer. Okay, you do that. Yes. It's really pretty. And I love how it turned out. And um, again, pom-pom from Fabu Knits, because I agree, best pom-poms. Plus, she's here in Utah, so I love that. Yeah. And, and she's um, just really sweet. Oh, yeah, so. she is. And she's pretty fast at it. I mean, just all of the above. Great service and gorgeous, gorgeous pom-poms. Whenever I get a package of pom-poms, my kids are all always want to play with them for quite a while. <laughs> and then fight over which one's going to be for them. But this <laughs> one's not for any of them. This is for my daughter-in-law. So... Anyway, I love how it turned out. It's so pretty. And that worked up really fast. I did the same thing with you uh, as you where I held, I did um, the uh, two uh, fingering outside. fingering weight yarn inside and outside of the, the cake. And it worked out great. I did it a little bit smaller because my daughter-in-law, as she likes to say, she has the, what does she say? I have the head the size of a grape. That's what she says. She doesn't. She has a perfectly proportionate head. But I think what it is is she doesn't like hats, the the weight of hats that are too big. They, oh, she okay. doesn't enjoy that. So she likes them a little bit snug. And this will still be slouchy, but not as slouchy as probably the other ones were. So I made it a little bit smaller. I think I actually knit it. This Fine Fish Yarns, um, the yarn, I was going to bring that up and I forgot to grab it. But it is... Um, it's a finer, it's, it's a light fingering. And so I went down one needle size so that I could um, get the kind of fabric that I wanted with it. Mm -hmm. And it worked out perfectly. So cute. And it was super fast. I think I knit it in like a day, a day and, a half. and a half. Yeah. Yeah, it was really fast. So that was really great. Alrighty. Well, this time of year, my favorite thing to make are hats. So, it's just a good time of year for hats. It really is. Remember, I keep saying I'm not making any gifts for people, and then I make four billion. <laughs> but I think what it is is that I'm not like requiring, like you're not obligated. It's, yeah, I'm not feeling obligated. I just make as I feel like it. So um, I have a friend with a gorgeous head of beautiful red massive curly hair and so I wanted to make so her pretty. hat that would accommodate that so I made a nice big squishy color blocked hat and um, I made my own pattern I used a US size 7 I used worsted weight yarn um, is it Baraco? yeah Bar so I got vintage and I don't know the colorways I just had a stash of some, you know, three or four different ones. And I did a folded brim that was really high because I wanted it to completely cover the ear so it was really mm. warm. And I did 88 stitches and I did an eight inch, you know, eight inches and then folded that up and just knit the, the what am I trying to say? knit the two layers together mm -hmm. and kept going until it was the length that I wanted and cinched the top closed. I didn't do any decreases. I just cinched the top closed. So did you um, have a different needle size for the brim or just nope. the same? Same, same. Oh. I didn't want it to Too be scrunched in. squishy, like tight at all. I wanted it mm -hmm. to accommodate her hair and feel, but 
because it's folded, it does actually make it a little bit thicker and a little bit more snug. So I didn't go down a needle size at all. I just wanted it to be completely straight. I so think my husband would really straight. love that kind of a brim on a hat because he wears them at work for warmth, specifically for his ears. Where yeah. you need it the most, yeah, for yeah. your ears. So uh, once again, Pom Pom from Fab Units. I have quite the selection. Same thing, anytime they come, my girls all fight over who gets a hat with, with which pom pom, and I yep. tell them they're not all for you. So there. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to think. I think I did the. Okay, did eight inches. This looks like two and a half inches more, maybe, and I think I did the top like six inches. But by the time it scrunches all in, it doesn't look like that much. I don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. I just kind of knit as I felt like and. It looks really pretty. So I like that color blocking. Good way to really use it. It's really soft. Well, and I had plenty of it. I could have done the entire hat, but I saw a lot of pictures mm -hmm. like this, and I thought it was so cute to have a mm -hmm. different pom pom with matching yarn. And so yeah, I thought cute. that was cute. So I think I'm going to make a couple more because I have more yarn to do the same type of style. It's really cute. I was going to do stripes of the blue and purple once I finished the brim, mm -hmm. but. I just liked a lot of the pictures I saw that were color blocked like this. It's fun, very fun. Here's another hat. Well, I'm gonna show, um, where'd they go? <laughs> Here, so with the extra yarn from the hat that I made, I had enough to make, you can somehow reach, you're closer to the camera somehow, but um, made a pair of shorty socks and those have not been blocked yet, but I will block them since they're a gift. Well, I don't know, maybe I will. Her feet are little. So my daughter-in-law, Tannen, has, she's petite and she has very little feet, whereas my whole family has big feet. So I'm used to like, let's block those so socks the first time I make them just to give them a good, nice finish, um, but also to open up lace or different things like that. But I kind of want to make sure to keep them as kind of, Petite and snug. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, snug. So anyway, but that's kind of fun because they, they're they matching. And I still have even some yarn left over. So I mean, really? how fun is that? One skein of yarn, one skein of fingering weight yarn, and I have a hat and a pair of socks. That's and crazy. I did put a contrast toe in it just for fun. Um, I, I, I could have finished the toes, but I barely would have finished them. So when I say I have some left over, I mean, I have a little, tiny ball of yarn left over. Yeah, with this hat, mm -hmm. I have this much yarn left. Yeah. But I did do longer brim, cuff, brim. And this brim. is a smaller hat. And this is a bigger hat. Yeah, too. so um, anyway, so it did work out so she could have a little matching set. Not that she'll wear them as a matching set. <laughs> Maybe she will. Maybe she will. You never know. <laughs> but those were fun. I just knit, um, I think I knit 16 rows of a cuff and then I knit two rounds and then just started right into my heel flap and worked my heel flap just um, pretty normal. I will, I do have elastic thread. So she has never owned hand knit socks before and her feet are new to me. <laughs> so we will see how they go. We might add elastic thread or we might need to change the foot length and that's totally fine. I don't have a problem. You know, if I need to undo a toe and add in a little more length or take out a little bit and we'll figure that out. But um, it was just a fun little gift. And this Fine Fish Yarns is, it, it. I would say it is one of the most perfectly even speckled yarns I think I've used in a long time. It is so consistent. That's very nice. So it works out really nice. Really I nice. will say with Shorty Socks, with all of them that I've made and adding an elastic that mm -hmm you think that you need it tighter than you really do. Mm -hmm. And so be careful not to make that too tight. I actually put it on my children or myself and tie off the elastic while it's on my foot so I can feel like how snug I really That's want it idea. to be um, because it's really difficult to tell otherwise. So that's my tip for you if you're going to do that. Well, I wouldn't know because I only have one pair of shorty socks. Had, had one pair of shorty socks. They got up. And, and danced away. Sorry. Left her feet. That's and a Phineas and Ferb reference. In the middle of the night. 
There was I'm... a sock thief they broke in, came into her bed, took them off her feet, and ran off. <laughs> so about a little over a month ago, I ended up with COVID, and I we're all totally fine. We got through it just fine, but it was... It was um, one of those nights where I was cold. I went to bed with socks on, which I normally don't. I have to, I have to have bare feet. I've got to feel anchored to my environment, so I don't usually <laughs> sleep with socks on. It's like grounding, you know, when yes. you walk barefoot, but it's sleeping. Ground. But I do the same thing. Like at night, when I take off my socks to get ready for bed, I'm like, oh, finally, I can feel the floor. <laughs> But anyway, I went to bed and I had those socks on and I woke up in the morning and I didn't. And I have no memory of doing anything with them, but they have never been seen again. And they, I mean, I have searched. I have gone through the bed. I, you know, we've changed the sheets since then. We've, you know, all the stuff, but. Sock thieves, I tell you, it's a thing. They have vanished and <laughs> never been seen again. I don't know what I did. I got up in the middle of the night and slept, walk, sleep, walked, and, uh. I don't know, took them out. And... Hey, I would steal your hand-knit socks, Emily, if it meant I didn't have to knit another pair of socks. Wait a minute. <laughs> were you in my house? Except for they don't fit me. But I miss them. They were the perfect socks. <laughs> Speaking of socks, I finished. Yay. I those finished are so cute. my next pair of socks. This is from, okay, let me grab this. My Tropical Hideaway colorway. Ugh. I have a mini. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can see the color. Um, this was a set that I dyed earlier in the year. I did a mini set of, um, Tiki Room colorways, and then I did a full skein of one of the minis with, um, another contrasting color that was called Aloha. And so I knit socks with that, and they're just vanilla socks, nothing too fancy, just so I could enjoy the color. And I just added in a little stripe at the toe and a little bit on the leg. I did a traditional slip stitch heel flap and gusset. So I knit them cuff down and I did 60 stitches, which is my favorite because I've got scrawny legs. Um, anyways, yeah, I love them. They're nice and bright and colorful and happy and cheerful for, they are really, really cute. for winter. And I think I have 40 grams left. So enough right. to do something with. There's always enough to do something with. For you sure. only have a small amount. So, oh, here's the mini, which I still have a lot of that left too. So I could do shorty socks. With Absolutely, these two. you could. So very easily with that. That's super cute. Look at my speckling. Very even. I was proud of my speckling. Yes. I was admiring mm -hmm. that the other day. Like as I knit, like, okay, what's the ratio? Is it, <laughs> is it work? You know, I always cross my fingers that I've done it well. <laughs> I, you know what? I love, I love yarn. So I like yarn that has variation in speckles throughout too. I, it's all good, but that's kind of fun to see the differences. Okay. Because I have no shorty socks. I made myself a So now you have shorty socks again. So hopefully these won't disappear. And those are so pretty. These are, this is made from the leftover yarn from my gathering shells. So I had made another pair of socks with those. Um, sorry, the pattern that I made it with was gathering shells. This is my Sanditon sock set. So based on Jane Austen's unfinished novel, Sanditon. And... Um, yeah, I just knit. I mean, it's pretty much the same as the ones I already showed you, but these are for me, so they're a little bigger. But they just turned out so pretty. And now that I'm showing them to you, I can wear them. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Just don't wear them in bed. I know, apparently Soft not. Soft strikes at night. <laughs> and here's the thing. You know the thing with, like, I have had other times, like, with non-hand knit socks, where sometimes your socks just come off mm -hmm. in the night. That does not Wrap happen with socks off. Knit. <laughs> in Bad. I was sick. <laughs> that wasn't what was happening. <laughs> but but um, handed socks, they don't just come off. Like if I want my handed socks off, I have to take them off. They don't just come off. They're nice and fitted to my feet. So anyway, now I can wear these. I'm so happy. <laughs> Yay. They're so pretty. I love, I just have realized that combination of any kind of yellow, peach, pink, you know that those three colors yellows and peaches and pinks wait did you say the colorways already this is sanditon socks oh i was thinking so pattern 
and then shelves. yeah and then um i originally i used this and designed my gathering shells sock pattern and so when you see pictures of that i and i admit you know obviously knit a pair of that um but this was leftover yarn that i used and so i love that i love if you have a sock set you can you really can get a pair of full size full size you know, regular socks and some shorty socks out of it depends depends on depending you. on them yeah but yeah. for me i usually can and with my with my sock sets so if you're doing contrast mm -hmm. cuffs heels toes any of that well and the interesting thing is i did do heels toes well no i think i did heels and cuffs on the gathering shell socks and i did I'm sorry, I did toes and cuffs on the gathering shell socks, and I was still able to do toes and heel. That's surprising. Out of that mini, out when of a 20 I, gram mini. When I knit for my husband, if I do cuffs, heels, and toes, I am usually like two grams short. So I'm like I second have to, guessing myself. Maybe so I have I'm to wrong. knit the cuffs shorter or not do toes or, you know, for my husband. Well, that's because I lied because this is actually this, this yarn is from that set, but this is opera dancer's daughter in uh, the toes. I was, and I, I just pants on saw fire them because you're like, <laughs> just kidding. my pants are on fire. So ignore what I said about being able to get all of that out of a 20 gram mini. This is from a different skein. But it looks really good together. It does. It looks really nice. I like it. I'm like, well, yeah, that's really speckly. Anyway, there you go. Fun stuff. Okay, we're going to just continue on with the hat parade. Yes, we are actually. <laughs> so I knit another hat for another friend. Made up a pattern. I did not keep notes. I don't know what's wrong with me because I need, need to knit another, knit another one. But I could sit down and figure out the stitches and I used the largest needle that I have, which I think was a US 12, I think. Um, that looks like really bulky yarn. And this is super bulky yarn. It is, but I say super bulky. I don't know if it is super, bulky. it's bulky. It is um, Lion, brand, Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick is the brand, the type of yarn I used. Um, and then I just made a pom-pom with that yarn so I wanted super chunky hat um, that wasn't any fuss, no cables and all of that, just really plain. So um, I have a lot of this yarn, a lot of it. So I've been, at first I didn't know what in the world to do with it. And now I'm like, I need to go buy more because there's so many things I want to make with it. Cause it's, it's a pretty fabulous yarn. So And you can knit so fast. Yeah. I mean, that had to have been a I very I mean, this speed. hat, well, it does, I do have a lot of fatigue in my hands when I knit with bigger needles and chunkier, chunkier yarn. So while the time could be less spent knitting it, it mm -hmm. takes me just as long because I have to take a lot of breaks in between. Yeah, so, but it still is a pretty quick knit. I just wish the pom-pom was bigger. I thought I had the biggest pom-pom maker, but I didn't. So uh, it's okay. Because if it was too big, this would weigh so much. <laughs> it really would. Because <laughs> it's already a pretty hefty hat. <laughs> so That's but, cute. Yeah, cute one. Super cute. All right, more hats. So I've made this hat. This is the Tide Knots <gasps> hat by Justinia Lorkowska. Oh, I have knit several of these. This is my um, Tea with Tumnus. Okay, it's not looking Come quite on. the same in the camera. But no, it's so it's pretty. warmer, I think. Yeah, it's it's not yeah, it's a warmer tone than it's showing. So that is so going pretty. to be a gift for somebody that that could I know possibly be watching this. So I won't mention that. I don't think she is, but um, a Christmas gift. But I love that. This is a pattern that I adore, as you will see in a minute. Um, I have knit this many times, probably. Well, I don't know, four, maybe five times. It is just so, I don't Can you know. say the pattern again? It's tied knots. It's a DK weight hat. It fits just a little bit slouchy, but not too slouchy. So, you know, kind of here, I'll put it on, but hopefully it won't be terrifying with my hair. So, I mean, you can see it's got a little bit of just slouchiness, perfect. but just not too much. I and the see cables, sorry, here we go. Okay. The cables are so pretty. 
Um, but the, the actual cable pattern, it's only about this many rows and then you do it kind of two and a half times. So it isn't too complicated. There are only um, ever two stitches going over two stitches or maybe, yeah, two, two over two. So it's not huge cables that you're kind of wrestling with, which can be really fun anyway. But anyway, I don't know. I just really enjoy it. And I think it's just got a lot of bang for the buck, if that makes sense. And again, Pom Pom by Fabio Knits. And because this, this not yarn, <laughs> yeah, like, we, say we are not point. official sponsors of Fabio Knits. We just really <laughs> love them. Um, Tea with Tumnus, this taupey color, it has kind of little flecks of grayish blue in it. And so this pom pom is perfect because it's kind of a grayish blue with these like golden warm tan tips. Tips. And it just worked out perfectly with it. So I love that. And I think she's really gonna like it. It's a very pretty hat. It is. Isn't it pretty? It's, it's so pretty. and it's squishy. It's just so lovely. I did that, like I said, in Tea with Tumnus on my I think this is on my memoir DK base. So that was really fun. Oh, there it is. Next hat. Next up. La, 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 la. Trying to get the light to capture, like highlight the pattern on here. So this hat um, was for my daughter. It's uh, called Forenzi Hat by Wanded Knits. Um, oh, Wanded Knit and Crochet. Um, I found this on Lovecrafts. And this hat pattern um, has instructions for knitting with super bulky, bulky, or worsted weight yarn. Mm -hmm. So it has three different options for that. Um, and this was not a fast knit because m most of the time when you're doing cables and things, you're like, you'll knit so many rows and then you'll do the cabling row, which helps kind of braid it around. Now this one was every single round had cables and I seem to have to unpick as often as I knit. I don't know, cause I knit most of the time right before bed and my brain is tired. So, um, my daughter did not want it to be slouchy really at all. I mean, just barely, she didn't want a pom-pom. So, um, it's very pretty, but the yarn I used I was gonna is ask Malabrigo, um, Mecca. Where's my tag? Where's my tag? Malabrigo Mecca. Um, I have it written down just in case I couldn't find my tag. Yes, in the Ceriza 033 colorway. Um, after knitting this and looking through my hat patterns, the library I have on my computer, I realized this looks like the Zoe hat that I already purchased. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that one, it uses maybe a DK weight held mm -hmm. together with mohair. So different and it's, weight. And it is different than that. Cause I was looking at the stitch pattern. Now it's going to change depending on the weight of yarn, like how it ends up looking, but it looked almost the same. So anyways, I got out the Zoe, my Zoe hat after I saw this one, cause mm -hmm. I thought the same thing and there are differences for sure. The thing about the Zoe hat is that, I don't know, at least for me, it turned out small. Yeah, this one, just the right size. Um, mm -hmm. But this one wasn't for Christmas, not a Christmas gift. Oh, this yarn actually came as a gift for Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted last year for my daughter. Oh, that's So cool. last year, my requests were all something for my children because mm -hmm. I get lots of things and, and uh, I wanted them to feel spoiled. And so uh, I was struggling to remember who sent this because I asked Ella if she kept the the note that came with it and she didn't um, unfortunately but there was this yarn and then a really vibrant well vibrant it was a rich like TARDIS blue perfect mm -hmm. for Ella which she immediately cast on and knit a hat and then she wanted one with this and then decided she didn't like knitting so I knit it for her. she kept begging me and I'm like of course I'll knit you a hat with gorgeous red yarn 
That is really Brigo. pretty it's too. It's so stunning. So that was just really thoughtful that somebody sent her beautiful yarn and she loves them both. And it looks fabulous with her vibrant hair. She had hot pink, so she didn't do the red yarn until she dyed her hair lavender and then she wanted the red hat after that. And now her hair is violet. So she has the whole spectrum of color That's on her fun. head and mm -hmm. I think it's fun. Especially once you add the hat, right? Yes, yes. All right. There's... Okay. Is the hat parade continuing or? Yes, actually okay. it is. Okay. So, hold on, I gotta dig down in here because this is a different project. So, as I mentioned, I really liked tied knots. <laughs> this one is not blocked. So, this is before it's blocked. And you can see the yeah, difference. Yeah, that's, that's like. It's, it's like ribbed. Super tiny. Yeah, a lot of times cabled items do that because you tend to put pearls in between, pearl rows in between the cables so that the cables kind of pop out. So they kind of look almost like they're ribbed. Um, this is for my daughter. This is why it's not blocked because I have not been able to do that without her seeing it yet. So I've got to figure that out. Oh, this pom-pom. This is the inspiration for this whole hat okay, because just as I said, when I got my last package, she immediately saw that one and said, oh, I love it, I have to have this pom-pom. So I knit this hat, it's again DK weight. This is in my Dickens colorway, which is, ooh, it's just one of my favorites, it's so pretty. And um, anyway, another fabulous pom-pom by, you guessed it. <laughs> Ooh, this is just an extra yummy pom-pom. Melissa, did you want to be a sponsor? Because I feel like at this point, we should develop some sort of relationship here. <laughs> it's almost a bit... Um... Kind of embarrassing, almost. <laughs> yes, we love her. So I just think this is so pretty. She's going to love this. And Abby, my youngest, she looks so good in hats. You know, like some people, like I just don't wear a lot of hats because I just, I don't know. First of all, they kind of annoy me on my head. And second of all, I don't think I look as cute in them. But, I wear a lot of hats and I don't think I look very cute in them. Well, I think you but look But I cute love them. the hats, so I wear them. Abby looks adorable in them and she wears them a lot. So she will just love this, especially because of the pom-pom. She'll be like, yeah, nice hat. Oh, I love the pom-pom. <laughs> like, but look at the cables. Okay, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That's super fun though. Okay. It's nice to have the big the stack growing. Yes. Another hat. <laughs> the, let me grab the pattern so I can remember. Where did I put the pattern? Is this the pattern? That's not the pattern. I have so many papers here. This is ridiculous. Um, I don't know what I did with that. It's by Hohi Locatelli. Um... It's just a ribbed hat that has um, some knits and pearls, you know, knit rows and pearl rows mixed in to break it up. And this is a beanie for my husband. He needs more hats. So of course it's going to be very boring, um, which is okay. It's like, it's not brown, it's not gray. You can't tell in there, but it's like, it's both of those. Uh, I have no idea what size to make this without putting it on his head. So I put it on mine, <laughs> but I don't know how our heads compare. I haven't really done that before compared our heads. The top <laughs> was looking really sloppy on the needles, the decreases, but now that it's done, it doesn't look sloppy. No, it I looks it nice. Looks it looks very nice. Um, but the picture did look like it was a little bit slouchy, which my husband would because I made one last year that I didn't know the length and ended up just like tiny bit too much. So he really doesn't like that. So he doesn't wear that hat very often. So I decreased between each section by one row on here just to reduce, you know, about half an inch um, of length. And I knit the medium size. So the yarn that I used... I know I have that in here. So it's shepherd's wool. It's shepherd's wool. I guess I didn't bring the bag. I left the bag that has oh, all I of like the notes. Shepherd's oh, I did wool, bring the bag because I finished it while I was here. I don't know. What is it? Your red bag? No, I have like piles, a mountain here. Here it is. It's right next to me. That was really 
Smart. That's your red bag. That's what I was talking about. Oh, I thought about. you were saying. Oh, never. <laughs> I have no idea. Shepherd's wool, worsted spun. I don't know, because they have different types, don't they? This one's the milk chocolate colorway. It's 250 mm. yards for four ounces. Um, and the pattern is called Rafa, I think. I didn't print the first page, mm -hmm. so that's where it has the title on it. But I believe that's what it was called. So I saw it as a display at, well, wait, Willow Hill at Gardner Village near us and thought that's a perfect pattern. So cast that on. That is nice. It's got enough texture too yeah. that it'll look really nice on him. So I actually have something for each member of my family for their stockings. I didn't think I was going to, I wasn't planning on it, but you know, I just knit up like, ooh, I feel like casting this on and then I knit it. And I, ooh, I feel like, so nice. it just ended up working out, which is very nice. See, I don't have anything for my boys, anything hand knit for my boys, for my husband or my two boys, but I do for the girls, so that's where I am. I don't have anything for Claire and Tyler. They're going to come over on Christmas morning mm -hmm. um, because I don't, they just don't need any hand knits. Like, yeah, they, that's kind of how I feel with my boys. They, yeah, so I bought some socks and stuff, but I think they just are not. Claire appreciates them, but I think that she needs some no fuss things. So mm, yeah, I could knit things with acrylic, but I think she has plenty of those things that I could make. So right. I'd rather get something that she'd be excited about. So you know how you said it's for my husband, so it's going to be boring. Okay. <laughs> We've talked about this before, right? Yeah. So um the other day Richard and I were running a bunch of errands and we stopped and bought a sandwich at a drive-thru and um I got one that's got like I don't know it was like an Italian sandwich with banana peppers and capicola and I don't remember everything but you know flavor and he got a flavor <laughs> tuna sandwich on white bread and hold the tomatoes and I can't remember what else was on it so it was just tuna and bread and as we drove away I'm like <laughs> he goes Man, I'm really stepping out of my comfort zone here because I always get a ham sandwich. But this time I got a tuna sandwich. So I'm like, wow, honey, way to mix it up. And he goes, yeah, I wanted to ask if they could add extra boring with, with that. Last night That's I made so sandwiches. Weird. I grilled yeah. some sandwiches for dinner. And I had some sourdough bread that I made. And then I made pesto from my garden mm. earlier in the year so I could have dairy-free pesto. And I froze it in little ice cube trays and those are in baggies in my freezer. So I just get one of those out and it's enough for like one pizza or a few sandwiches. So I had pesto, then I had sliced turkey, mm -hmm. and then I had a homemade balsamic vinaigrette that I had made, and I had roasted red peppers and sliced red onion. Right, flavor. And <laughs> I love it with um, marinated artichoke hearts, sliced mm -hmm. really thin. Mm -hmm. I had a dairy-free cheese, all of that stuff. You dip it in the balsamic vinaigrette. Yeah. Yeah, flavor. Just so ice cream, potatoes, sandwiches, um, oatmeal. The only point in eating those is everything else that and goes pizza, with it. To see how much you can cram on top of it. Right. In it. Like that's the only reason. That's the only Same reason. thing. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, with pizza. We did that too with pizza recently where well, mine is, you know, again, artichokes, red onions, roasted garlic, roasted yeah. peppers, you know, just like anything you can add for flavor and Richard's is like pepperoni I, or call, sometimes he doesn't do that he's just like cheese just cheese yeah <laughs> <laughs> how boring well so oh I forgot last night on my sandwich I then had baby arugula and I opened up my mm -hmm. sandwich and put a pile in and I was yeah. like oh good time for your salad sandwich because whenever I make pizza then I essentially yes. make a salad and put that on yes. top with the balsamic vinaigrette arugula on pizza is like the oh, best yes. it's so good it's so good so good that's the only reason I grow it, is so I can put it on put pizza, it on pizza and sandwiches. And sandwiches. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, look what I made. <laughs> so, <Okay>. this <laughs> is Pollyanna Porker. Here we are. <laughs> I love all of your name alliterations that you have. <laughs> that makes me so happy. I really should grab my, you know Her what? hair is so cute. I am going to grab like... this really quick. Hold on. <laughs> so, you have 
I'm trying to remember. You had Farrah Foxit. Well, I'm going to show you guys. Oh, okay. Because I the, the names to go with them. Yes, are they're important. The fun part. So the first one was Ellie Elephant, obviously. Okay. These are all Julie Williams Little Cotton Rabbits patterns. And then after her was Bonnie Bunny, and she is actually my very favorite. She has the sweetest little face and her little lock ears. They just make me so happy. But that's Bonnie Bunny. To Bonnie Bunny is gonna live next to Ellie, Ellie Elephant. Elephant. And then there's Kit the Cat. <laughs> Look at her. She looks a little like sassy actually. And she's little. I don't know why, but for some reason she ended up smaller than the others. I knew her at a tighter gauge or something. You were stressed at the time, I remember. It was the day before Summit. Or oh, that's nice. But that's when I knit her head, not her body. Oh. And her body is little. Anyway. And then I made one of the little mini bears. And I think that we named her... Oh, what did we name her? Oh, it's gone. It's a bee name. But anyway, the little bear. Brenda Bear? I don't know. And then Farrah Foxit. That's Abby's favorite. The yellow is so cute. And that's so fun. And we have a couple of extra little dresses. We've got this one that Ellie has. And then we have the little cupcake dress. That was Kit's. But now we have... Nice fair fox it to put next. But to. now we have Pollyanna Porker. <laughs> and look at her curly little tail. <laughs> oh, I just love it. So I have talked at my, my Abby has, she just loves these so much. And, um, we, we have an agreement that all the animals aren't like Ellie is hers. And I, I can't remember if Bonnie is hers. I think Bonnie is hers as well, but Kit and Farah actually are mine, but we've agreed to keep them all together so that we can enjoy them all together. But she has wanted the little sailor piggy for some time. And I, the thing is that when I make them, I really do enjoy it. But then I have to go, I have to kind of gear myself up to make another one. Mm -hmm. Just because they are very detailed, very fiddly. They're not mm -hmm. a relaxing knit. They're a project knit. Yeah. But they are so fun. They're so cute. Also, Abby's hedgehog. Her This hedgehog's name is Piccolo. So... Um, a few years ago, I made hedgehogs for all my all my kids, and they um, named them all. Arya's little hedgehog has traveled many places with her, and she named it um, Shakespeare, uh, Pickle Shakespeare the Fifty Tooth. So, <laughs> but anyway, this is Pollyanna Porker, and she's just darling. She's got her little blue bloomers pantaloons, and look at her little socks. They're cuffed. The cuffs kind of, you know, they can fold up. And the little red button. And anyway, she's just adorable. So that is going to be for Abby. And she will be so excited because she has been begging me for quite a while for this little pig. But I have to keep her hidden for now. Very, very fun. Uh, do you have enough of the pink to make another one? I think so. Yes. I mean, for sure. So I knit... I. I told you I meant to bring up some other yarn, but um, this was Haiku yarn. I don't remember. Found it at Willow Hill. Yeah, and I think it's an acrylic wool blend, if I remember correctly. It was a gift from Deborah because she knew I wanted to make it. And so she gave me the yarn, which is why I actually did it. It, it wouldn't have happened if she hadn't given me that yarn. Cause I would have had, you know, it's just one more step, something to think about. But if I have all the supplies just right there, might as well for the, the, that was the haiku is a DK weight yarn for the pig. And then the clothing and the little bloomers and like the little shoes and everything are knit at a fingering weight. And I used palette knit picks palette yarn in, I think this is called Marine blue or it's something. Yeah. Marine. It's kind of a greenish blue. Um, also just their cream color. And then this little red was just, I don't know, it was a scrap I had. Oh, I know what it was. It was from my Woolberry sock set that I bought for Christmas last year, or I bought to make Christmas socks last year. And it's just that tiny little blip of red right there. And then the little blip here. So anyway, turned out pretty cute. She, But she's she's got some extra buff arms. So Isaac was saying I should give her an anchor tattoo on her. <laughs> But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that would 
<laughs> oh uh, man. I need a little animal. Oh, oh, it's so cute. This is a Toft, um, it was from a Toft kit. Um, That's adorable. I bought the kit on clearance from Willow Hill because I needed the crochet hook because it was a size that I needed. Um, and I never intended to make this. I just needed, so it came with the hook. It came with the hook, and it was cheaper than buying it online somewhere. So then it, I was just out in my sewing room one day and looked at it and went, "Oh, I had just watched Fruity Knitting." podcast episode where they talked about these and I went I'm gonna have to make one because this was the very first design that she had made that she designed and I had the kit for it and she's like I made it for absolute beginners um I can't say that I would say this is for absolute beginners because I'm not an absolute beginner and I you know I didn't have a problem making it but I would have as an absolute beginner so um, I think because of the size being so small, mm. it was more difficult. If it was a little bit bigger, it would have been a little easier. So I don't think mine turned out as cute as the picture. Either. I think yours is cute. But it is cute. So I have it made, I added this bow, which I tied on, glued on and stitched on mm. so that it can be safe for a child. And I just will set this aside to go with like a blanket or something for a baby gift. Cute. Um, but I figured I have the stuff I should make it. Um, and what weight of yarn is that? Does it say on there? No. No. Mm -hmm. I think it's a worsted. I believe it's a worsted weight mm -hmm. yarn. And I do like the yarn quite a lot for making mm -hmm. the making the toy making the toys there. It was a really nice one. And I really love the hook. I would like all of the Toft crochet hooks like whatever size if they have other sizes i would i would buy them all. what is it about the hook because i'm not it familiar feels with them really nice like the shape of the handle it's it's round mm -hmm. like it gets a little bit thicker and a little bit smaller mm -hmm. but it just is the right size and i like the tip of it it's not mm -hmm. too pointy not too dull i like the shape of the hook where it pulls mm -hmm. it through i just the whole thing about it i really like so yeah that's cute. For getting rid of your toff needles, send them my way. Because her hooks. <laughs> but she won't be because you love them just like I do. So. Cute. A little tiny. Little, it's little so tiny cute. <laughs> so, so cute. Oh, oh my gosh. We are coming up on an hour here and we still have work, our finished objects. Do you have some more? I have some more. Okay, okay. So this is just a tiny one, but I made another little hedgehog because that is one thing Tannen said. She's like. Everybody. Everybody has a hedgehog. I definitely need one. And so I just grabbed scraps to make him. And he's a little derpy. Look at him. He's kind of like, I don't know, his little face. He's special. I like he's, how special he is. He's a special needs hedgehog. He's so cute. He's so, he so cute. cute. I love his little face. Anyway, I used scraps, but I ended up using stone table and not a tame lion held together in the body. Let's see if you can see. It's got some kind of fun color variations. And then Tea with Tumnus. So this is a Narnia hedgehog. This hedgehog is from Narnia because all the colors were from Narnia collection. Came through the wardrobe back with them. Yep. Isn't he cute? <laughs> so cute. He is. <laughs> so he'll just go in her stocking. So, oh, he's fun. So that's a fun little one. Now she ha she'll have one. Now Ethan gave his away. But I'm not making him another one if he doesn't. He has to ask for it if he wants another one. I'm not going to just be like, oh, you don't have one and the rest of the family does. you got to earn it by at least asking. But that's all he has to do to earn it, actually. <laughs> okay, another pair of socks. Yay. I showed these before. They were, I think they were almost done. Um, but they're done now. This yarn was very something. It was from Willow Hill Yarn Company. Mm -hmm. It was hand dyed by the owner and it's kind of fun. She started several years ago doing like special collection that she had dyed for Harry Potter. Like it, at Halloween time, mm -hmm. it was all Harry Potter themed. Loved them, bought several of those. And then the next spring she did some that were like unicorn and fairies. And so Nadia picked out this yarn and she liked shorty socks. So I made her some. She says she likes hers without elastic. 
So I didn't put any in hers, um, but I did let it knit a longer cuff because normally I would do for shorty socks, I would do, I think like 10 rounds. And I think this one I did 12 to 15, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they were just pretty simple. The toe, I just decreased like I would for a hat instead of doing a traditional wedge mm. or rounded toe like I normally do. Um, I didn't use any pattern for this, but I know that there are a lot out there that um, if you're doing toe up or cuff down, there's umbrella toe and there's beanie toe. Um, one is by Bakery Bears, K of Bakery Bears. One is by Jules from So Sweet Violet, depending on if you're doing cuff down, toe up. Mm -hmm. But essentially, if you knit hats, that's how you do it. You just mm -hmm. decrease at various points, like a spoke of a wheel going smaller. So every, I think I did every three rounds for a bit and then did two and then one so that it would curve. I, I just kind of made that up. What made you decide to do that instead of the wedge? I don't know, I just was in a mood to do just something different. Try something different. Yeah, I like that. And then I did leave a couple of stitches and kitchenered the tip because I didn't want it all to come together at one singular point. And have like a... Yeah, so, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's like six stitches maybe. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's it. That's an interesting idea. I like that. I get so in a groove. I just knit my socks the same every time. I, yeah, I want to try so... a different heel turn to see how they fit because I know, like I typically do, I don't know the name for it, but it's the shape. It's a wedge, essentially. Essentially, yes. But I know there's square ones. There's different types, but I always do that one because I don't have to think. Mm -hmm. But I would like to try some others just to see how they fit. But then I don't really want to because I want to just keep going and not have to stop and like, okay, now how does this go? I know. So it's, I'm always torn yeah. between the two. Like I want to try different ones, but I want to just keep going and not have to fuss. So Socks are the thing that you kind of, I think a lot of people just find their way yeah. and just stick with it. This is my sock. This is how I do it. Even if you change stitch patterns or textures or lace or cables or whatever, you still construct your sock yep. the same way. Okay, so um, I Deborah made these fingerless mitts, I think like a year or more I ago. I made them in January. Oh, okay. And they ended up being too big for her. So she gave them to me and I have loved them and I have used them a lot. And um, the other day my husband took the my car to the shop he's a mechanic and he took the car to the shop and i apparently left them in the car and one of his friends that he works with saw them and said oh, my wife would love some of those well this is a particularly lovely well cranky grouchy but also lovely friend say, a lot of times when they're cranky and grouchy they're also but also super... very giving and everything that's so. my kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, Richard said, eh, what do you think? You know, he wasn't, he, he wasn't volunteering me without my permission, but um, we did want to do that for him. So I knit these for her. She's um, got smaller hands than I do. Well, so I'm going to try them on. Yeah, oh. you'll have to try them and see what you think. Oh, that's pretty yarn, Emily. Isn't that pretty? <gasps> oh, those fit me perfectly. <laughs> well, now I, I know, know what you need to make for <laughs> Did you want to make some more? Oh, this yarn is so... Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Look at my pants. Matches my pants. So this is um, Malabrigo Rios. That's why it's so perfect because it's just, you know, one of the squishiest, <gasps> yummiest yarns. <gasps> Look how pretty those are. And now oh, I can't she's remember the color. Love these. She will love it. And, and she specifically, you know, he said that she loves rich pinks and purples. So yeah. I think those will be perfect Ooh, for her. Those are Pretty. So yeah, I made those. And what I did, and I just, I kind of copied the ones you made where you used World Simplest Mittens yes. by Tin Can Knits, and then um, just altered it from there. So I kind of counted rows and are generally length of things, but then made it the next smaller size. So um, you just follow the pattern up until you're at the point. So you end up putting your thumb stitches on hold while you knit the hand. And you just follow the pattern until you kind of get to, you figure out how deep you want your, your, um, What I did is at, at my fingers, that's where I switched to doing ribbing. And then I knit it up until it got to the yeah, that's top about right. of my fingertips. 
so mm -hmm. that when it folded down, it would be the right length. Yeah. But if I was actually too cold, I could pull it up and it would still cut. And you could do that. But these are snug on me, but I'm a little bit too short. But like if I, because my fingers point out or stick out a little bit because I have, I have very long fingers. But for her, they will cover that up. So yeah, if you're too cold and you're driving, you can just pull them up, but then you can fold them down and still be able to use yeah. your phone and everything. I did try knitting wearing my fingerless mitts and I didn't have a great success because it just got caught on it. But anyway, those are gonna be for her. And I'm actually gonna give them to him and he would like to give them to her as a gift. And um, we're considering it as he has paid many times over in kind things and that he has done too help my husband his, so his boss has done nice things is that what you're saying this is well richard is kind of this guy's boss so but oh, he's okay. he's been really wonderful so um anyway those will be for him to give to her but i just finished them last night and i almost sent them with him to work and i said uh he can wait one more day so i can <laughs> okay. show you guys <laughs> but that's one of those experiences where oh i would love to hire your wife to make like, no, 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 no. You it. cannot afford me because I cost $300 an hour. <laughs> but I will make it for you as a gift. A lot of people don't understand that at all. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> they don't understand, like, you don't want me to pay you, but you'd make it for me as a present? I don't, yeah, I don't get yeah. that. I made it myself. Those are so Some fingerless gloves. Pretty. This is what I knit on my trip. I was going to work on something else. I was going to take a project that I wasn't as excited about, so I would just, that's the only thing I had, so I'd have to work on it. And I decided at 6 a.m., right before we left, no, this has been on my wish list to make mm. for three years, maybe. So I'm just going to take those and make them. So I did. So these are fingerless mitts. The pattern I bought years ago had the yarn put it in a project bag with the needles and the notions set aside to make um, and never did. So it's by Vanilla Wool. I don't know why the picture isn't here. They printed it without the picture, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, Vanilla Wool is the company, the brand, the brand. I don't know the designer's name though. Um, and it's the Vanilla, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it has a J. Um, fingerless mittens and I did make some alterations to it so I just used a bare um, yarn and mohair held together it is, didn't call for holding two together is it fingering weight plus mohair or DK no, plus mohair it is, I didn't didn't have the label mm -hmm. and so it looks like DK possibly worsted but I think DK. It looks like DK. Yeah. Held with mohair. This is the reason I didn't make it because I grabbed yarn and I suspect that it was DK because that's what the pattern called for. And then I thought, oh, I'll just add this. Well, a lot of time when you add that, it increases the size. Um, but I just thought I'm gonna keep the same needle size and see how the gauge works from there. But I was, you know, newer to knitting, didn't understand gauge, all of that. And so I thought this isn't really gonna work. So I never ended up making them until just now and played around with it in the car. So what I did is I actually started with a smaller stitch count for the, for the arm. And then I increased when it was time to start doing the thumb gusset. And you can see I increased two stitches mm -hmm. right there. And then on this side, I increased one stitch here and one stitch here. Um, to make it a little bit wider for the hand because when I started knitting it as the pattern called for it was too loose here and I just like with the last pair I didn't make it wasn't snug enough on the wrist so it would have been too loose right here so it was four stitches difference and that helped a lot so right at the palm here is mm. where the increases are and you really can barely see but here and there um, they look like they fit perfectly. They do. And then the ribbing, because my meat, my numbers were different, I couldn't do the ribbing as it called for. So I did a one by one rib all the way around and then um, just figured out how the ribbing would line up here with the braids, the cables, and did that um, ribbing different here and did the same thing on the top. So it goes back to one by one ribbing here. 
And I think that it called for it to just end right here on the thumb, but I wanted it longer and so I knit some ribbing. Because I think that when you finish the gusset increase, you just would bind off and mm -hmm. be done. But I then went and picked up the, I went and uh, I just put the live stitches on some yarn and then finished this and then went back, picked those up and knit a couple of rounds and some extra stitches right here to close up the, you know, little yeah. gap and knit some ribbing. That's how, that's how the thumb is on those others that, yeah. that you made and then I copied. And mm -hmm. I like mine to be pretty long. So I just want them just so I can use fingertips for phones. That's pretty much it. Um, so I knit it pretty long so I could have access to that because I do like it down here. So that's a little bit more functional for other things, but if I want mm -hmm. warmth, you know, then I go up higher. So pretty with that halo of the yeah. mohair. So soft. So my three year wish list project is done and it took very you. little time, very little time. And you probably thoroughly enjoyed it because you were knitting it at a it. time. You're gonna have such good memories. It was so enjoyable to knit, so enjoyable. Snagged Loved yarn. everything about it. That's all of my finished objects. Let's Whew. see. I have, I'm tired. I actually have two more, but okay. I, you know what? I'm not going to show them this time, actually. I will show them next time. They're not important for now, and they're not gifts that are going to be given away. So that means that I can... You don't have them here? Yeah, I forgot to grab them. They're with okay. the yarn and everything that I was going to show. So I will show my one really boring <laughs> last finished object, which is a dishcloth. And it's all tied up in here in a, I'll untie it. Just take my yarn off. Very, very simple dishcloth. This is a corner to corner dishcloth. And I knit it out of um, peaches and cream in the natural kind of color. But I also have this one that is gonna go with it, which is another peaches and cream. And this one is whatever this color is color one four seven two eight <laughs> but it's kind of a pretty little like it has the it has the natural but it also has lavenders and greens in it and so there will be a set as a gift with those two and the pattern that i have used that i really like for these is um let me pull it up really quick da, 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 this one it's a free pattern that is also even says right on the pattern, share this with whoever you want to. And it just says dishcloth recipe by Robin Wiest, W-I-E-S-T. Um, and I really, I like, the thing I like about it, first of all, it's really easy, but when you get to your widest point, you do these little mini short rows. So you add an extra row in your kind of ribbed edge here at the corner and a little extra row over here at this corner. And so it makes your points quite nice and not kind of bowed. Um, and so it just turns out nice and square, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. this has been kind of, this is not even, I, I don't know that I'll block it, but it's, it's not, cloth. yeah, it's not, um, it's been wrapped up, but it's quite, it comes out nice and square without any extra work is what I'm trying to say. So it's very, very, very simple. Um, and like I said, she has said right in the pattern, this is how I make them. There's all kinds of recipes for a grandma's dish cloth and they're all been jotted down on paper and passed around for ages. So she said, this is how she does it. And um, where was it that it says that you may distribute this one freely and sell the finished items. <laughs> so she just says, but don't sell the pattern because that would be rude. So I um, just think it's a great one that's freely shared and it's so nice. And Deborah and I were having a talk about the kinds. We love, well, he'll talk about that later, but we like other kinds of dishcloths. Um, but I just like these. I think that they are really great and nice and easy and a great present. So just tie them up like that put a little bar of soap with it and you have a great gift. Yep. Alrighty. Well, I think that first is... segment. Whew, we managed to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> Go take a potty break. 
Get some water. Get a snack. Stretch your legs and your neck. Lower your shoulders away from your ears. Oh, yesterday I felt like I spent a whole yeah. day like this. And at the end of the day, I was like, why am I so tight? Like, oh, just drop just, them down. Yep. I was doing that all night. We all just... need to breathe. <laughs> need to do some meditation. <gasps> it's snowing. It is. There's just little flakes just drifting really just lightly. Light flurries. Oh, that's good. That's good. My husband and younger two daughters are supposed to go skiing and snowboarding tomorrow. Fun. Um, yeah, I think he made the reservations. It's different now, you know, having to make yeah. sure that you have reservations, that there's mm -hmm. room for you, all of that. Um, and that would be nice to have more snow. A good outdoor yep. thing to do. Yep. Um, there was something I was going to say, and it was super intelligent and pithy. <laughs> and witty which is probably why i forgot it because my brain doesn't <laughs> handle that very well oh well, let's move on done. to works in progress all right i'll start yep making a dishcloth yeah so i prefer jewel's wondrous dishcloth pattern jewel's from so sweet violet we've talked about this many times before and we were discussing you know why i like this one and versus the other type because the other type it's fine i have no problem if anybody else wants to use them but i have a texture issue <laughs> and there's something about if i'm like going to wash the counter or something with it and the stitches kind of spread and shift and move apart because it's a looser gauge single layer and it feels sorry i have a it feels slimy to me <laughs> i don't know like it's moving it's just not right <laughs> So I have an issue with that. So I have never liked hand knit or crochet dishcloths that were single layered. And then when Jules showed this on her podcast, I was like, I think I can get behind that. Mm -hmm. So I started making them, made one. Yes, made two. I think I'm now on 15 or more because yeah. I really like them. It's so weird. Things that irritate me that like, it's just weird. Paper towels. Can only buy certain kinds <laughs> newspaper absolutely not there is no way <laughs> that's why i'm with cotton balls oh there's just something wrong about cotton balls and i've been balls. painting my nails for the last year like constantly so i'm and i used to do nails all the time and so i'd use cotton <laughs> the worst so, the worst thing uh, ever is that scene in elf where oh. he eats the cotton balls emily are you trying to make me sick <laughs> I know it's like ugh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's awful. Okay, like so anyway, squeaky <laughs> texture things. I don't eat yogurt for that reason. <laughs> I didn't like ice cream and baked potatoes for years for that reason. Then I learned if you add so much stuff on top that you can't find the texture of what you're putting it on top of, then it's you're fine. fine. <laughs> then it's fine. So, <laughs> well, I think you're crazy, <laughs> but that's okay. We already t said earlier, the ship has sailed. <laughs> so I really like this pattern. So I'm making my mother, I made some for my mother for Mother's Day because, you know, washcloths for a Mother's Day gift. <laughs> my mother-in-law got mad at, at Jason, my husband, one year because he gave me a blender. And then another year he gave me a staple gun. And then another year, what did I get? It was another thing like that. Yeah, but you and probably she, loved them. She's like, you don't give your wife a staple gun for Mother's Day. And he's like, but she asked for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. So my mom asked for some washcloths and I made her some. And then she said, Deborah, if you want to know what I want for Christmas, I want more of those washcloths. So I've made two. I'm working on three. I might get four done. Um, all from the same yarn. This was yarn that was a gift to me by my friend Mandy. And um, it is a cotton acrylic blend. This is the brand. Let's see. Yeah. Sear jar. Let's go what it is. And it has some, yeah, it has, it's a DK. And it has some sparkle in it, like a strand of sparkle. So not like necess necessarily little, little flex, but a strand that's woven on through it but you can't really see that in here and you can see it in person really yeah, in really person well you can. and then i bought and i didn't bring it with me i was at joanne's a little while ago and there was a 
like scrubby. It was like a, a, a lace weight yarn that had hairs all around it. I'm trying to think, what is the name? Eyelash, kind of like eyelash yarn, mm. but it was more scrubby. And oh. I thought I might try using that to make some little round like dish scrubbers to go with it. And it's like a grayish silvery color. So mm -hmm. this is yellow and it has a little silver in it. And I thought that it might be nice you to You could crochet scrubbies probably pretty easily. Yeah, that was that was kind of the it's idea. A great idea. But I was gonna give that a try to see if it works well. So nice. Two done, third one. There we go. So you mentioned mom and I realized I forgot to show one finished object, which is okay. kind of a big deal, which is mom's present. <gasps> yes, I want to see. So I made this for my mother. Very pretty. You were showing this on the last one. I, I show, and I didn't think at the time, oh, I'm making it for my mom. I just wanted to make it, but then I realized this would be perfect me for the her. The other day when she was saying, you know, things that she would like, mm -hmm. she says, I need a centerpiece for my kitchen table. Oh, well, there you go. Isn't that pretty? That's very pretty. So here's the hard thing. I cannot share the pattern because it was a, one of those weird things where you can find the image, but no source because it's a vintage pattern and it was in Russian. All I found was just a picture of a chart and you can tell it's a vintage from the way it's drawn. And so I even had to make up part of it and I, I changed the entire outside edge of it and everything. But so unfortunately I can't share, but I think it turned out just about perfect. This looks like trees. Isn't that pretty? It's kind of, oh, that is interesting. I didn't think of that as trees, but oh, it's just, I think it is gorgeous it's very <laughs> it's so very so pretty you know this is one of those things where so much of what we do and i am not complaining about it because i love it but so much of what we do is taking really lovely gorgeous nice quality yarns and then just putting them into other configurations right whereas this to me is one of those things where i took something that cost me i mean honestly it's like pennies practically for the amount of thread that you use in this because it's just the cheap crochet cotton you know Aunt Lydia's size 10 crochet cotton and the the amount that I used for this probably cost me two or three dollars but it's about the time I'm showing you the back and of it that doesn't actually just matter stunning. and then look at that and so I think about all the lace that we see like the vintage handmade laces and they're all like that you know mm -hmm. very inexpensive um, products supplies that's what I'm looking for that they use but just time and it's so beautiful anyway look at that I hope she loves it I love it I think it's just I'm like it needs to be displayed like that like <laughs> like you want to hang it or something like in the like starch oh. it and hang it in your window I don't know I know I'm just but thinking it's, that. Just it's just so pretty, pretty held up like that because when you lay it down I'm like that's pretty held up here with the light shining through and yeah. Seeing the drape, oh, that's stunning. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. So I think she'll enjoy it. Yeah. I have knit, I mean, crocheted her some lacy doily type things. I've done like some fillet crochet mm -hmm. and things like that for her that have had like rose patterns in them. Maybe just one actually, but she's all, she's seen, you know, she's appreciated it and commented on it, you know, years later and still commenting on it. So Hopefully she'll like that. Okay, that wasn't a work in progress, but. But let's see one. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna show you these. So I'm making a pair of socks for my daughter who's downstairs, but she has her headphones on mm -hmm. and she's doing schoolwork, so it's fine. Um, I She is one of those who appreciates hand knit socks so much and just they loves them. And that's all she wears. She doesn't wear other socks unless she's like exercising or whatever. And so I'm knitting her a pair of True North socks. This is my newest pattern. And um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to, here, Deborah, you do the, you do the showing. <laughs> and this is in my Bronte colorway. She specifically requested lacy socks. It's hard to see right now because yeah, it's not blocked, but they have kind of like these little arrows um, on them. And um, I'm knitting hers in a, the 68 stitch size, which is the large. 
Um, the pattern comes in four sizes and this is the large size. And um, I was gonna do different socks for her with this gorgeous self-striping yarn, but which is from Scrumptious Pearl. I'm gonna have some of this left over to do some contrast heels for that. Um, but she just really wanted lacy socks. And I've made her a lot of stripey socks. I tend to knit stripey socks for her because I like to use the stripey yarn, but then when I get them done, I don't necessarily reach for them for myself and she loves them. So anyway, so those are for her. And um, the hardest thing is knitting them because she is around all the time and she, um, I'm not able to be sneaky with her. I can be sneaky with Abby because Abby has a short attention span. <laughs> so I could be like, oh, I'm busy doing something, you know, come back down here in a minute and then put my things away. And she's like, what were you doing? Oh, just a project. Oh, okay. And then she's on to Whatever something else. But Aria will go, oh, oh what is I know project? what she's working on. Yeah, I knit Jason's hat for him, sitting next to him in bed. And he probably didn't notice. That's just- It's not that he doesn't pay attention to things. It's that I'm always knitting, right. always making something that it's, not a big deal and even if he did see it he wouldn't he'd be like oh good i love the hat you know yeah. it, it's not a big deal yeah well i told our kids we are, i want i really want a simple christmas this year as far as i'm not spending a lot of money on gifts we don't need more stuff in our house they all have everything they need you know and so the handmade things are where i really want to put my my efforts and my attention, and so it's fun to have them be a surprise. Yeah. Can I show the bag? Yes, go for it. I haven't shown all of my bags. I'm gonna have to do that. Oh, I okay, either. this bag is from Emily. This is a <laughs> gift from Emily. She and I have a little group that we've called Pink Ladies because we all like pink. <laughs> she had Tiffany. From Southern Sparrow Handmade. She embroidered the patches and then Emily put them on these bags, which are nice because they have three pockets on the outside. Um, nice size canvas bag. So I got that on the same day that I received this gorgeous yarn. Oh so this yarn is for Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit's yarns. Mr. Mr. Yep. I'm like a Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit hand dyed yarn. Um, so that's all the way from the UK. I did a little swap with her and this is the colorway is Sherbet Christmas. That I was saying that's my all time favorite colorway that I've seen of hers. I saw it and I was like, oh, it's so pretty. It's really so lovely. So I immediately went out, wound the yarn and cast on a pair of socks. And this is, one example of where like the speckles are heavier on one end than the other and i want to show you something that i did with it because i think this is really fun that the end that had fewer speckles i pulled from on the outside and knit the cuff and then i switched to the inside and i'm knitting the body and then when i do the toe i'm going to go back to the outside so it's using the same yarn but it'll still have a little bit of difference but it's obviously like goes together is that's, perfect for each other super smart Deb. and it just gives it a little bit of difference to it so um, I'm going to actually go and cast on the second cuff on another needle since I'm pulling from the other end of the cake anyways so that I can make sure that they match really well because matching to me that's a big deal I want them to match so I thought that was actually a kind of fun like I like when I have skeins like that to knit like shawls and things so that you get almost a gradient effect where it gets heavier with speckles towards the outer end I've, I've even mm -hmm. dyed skeins specifically like that for that purpose so it's really fun I like it, it just is really pretty so you can see it's kind of just this almost stripey because it'll spiral down and then we get into some more color so the Yarn, the pattern, I have knit this before one or two times. This is also from Vanilla Wool, and it's the French Meringue Socks. 
and I really love these cables because I need to knit that. They're pattern. soft cables, like they don't have purl stitches on either end mm -hmm. to make them pop. So they just are just squishy and just kind of blend together and create a nice texture. The only issue that I have is I told you I have scrawny legs and I do not want to have to rework the whole pattern to do a 60 stitch sock. Mm. This is a sti 64 stitch that you actually increase to do the cables because when you do cables, it usually pulls it in, mm -hmm. um, which is nice for me. I would like that, but you increase to make sure that when it pulls in, it's the same as the front and the back. And I really love this yarn. So if I'm just really hoping that I'm knitting tight enough, I was going to go down a needle size, but that would kill my hands. So I'm just going to knit them because I love the yarn. I love the pattern. If it ends up being just a little too big for my leg, it'll fit a lot of other people. But I really, be a lovely I really want the yarn for me. And I wanted to knit this pattern. <laughs> so they just like are a perfect pairing. Very lovely. Really lovely. So that's so pretty. Just the beginning of it. This is my my cozy, indulgent knit. Like mm. I knit on this when I want to just go, ah, just for me knitting, mm -hmm. just for fun. Like that, that's how I feel when I knit on them. So pretty. Yeah, I'm awesome. gonna this. All right. Oh, she also sent, if you haven't watched on my, on my Christmas vlogs, a whole bunch of tasty gluten-free and dairy-free delicacies from the UK for me to try. That was really fun. I sent a whole bunch of American candies there because I'm a candy shop lady. I gotta send candy. Mm -hmm. So I love to try foods from other countries and different flavors. Even if I don't like them, I love to try new things and new flavors. One of my favorite Well, and you sent a couple of the little mince pies yeah, home for Aria. my daughter, Aria, who's also gluten and dairy free and it just it made her day. Yeah. That was really sweet. <laughs> All right, I have to show you my progress on my Grace sweater. This is Grace by Ririco. And here's some other pictures of it back here. It's the one with the cables in the back that kind of spread and go out to the side and then the cables down the I'm front. I'm gonna hold this up really close so that you can see that information. Yep, thank you. If they're wondering about that. I'm really getting there, you guys. So here is what I have so far. This is the front. It's hard to see, cause you know, it's at that size or it's just hard to show it, but you can, can show see. show the cables on the back. Oh, yeah, see, well, I was gonna say, you can see this cable runs down the front here. And now it's getting to the point where it's starting to increase. So the cable actually gets wider as it goes down on all the cables. And then there it is in the back. So the thing I, th I think about this sweater, it's gonna be perfect because you know, you've got the cable, it comes down here on both sides and then it divides and it kind of moves out to the side. So it's perfect to like be like a frame and say, here is my butt. That's well, that's the purpose of it. <laughs> I knew that would be the case when I cast it on and yet I'm knitting it anyway because I love it. <laughs> so it's really coming along. Um, I think I have 40 more rows until I, ooh, it smells. We had a campfire the oh. other day when we got together for um, our little, we had to do it. We did a little gathering with our little group. Christmas exchange. At Christmas exchange. And it was, you know, social distancing, outdoors. Outside. It was cold. It was cold. So we had a fire. <laughs> and so you can tell that. You can still smell I was it. working on this. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. I'll be when watching you block it. it. It'll it'll bring me happy memories <laughs> in the meantime. Um, yeah. So I think I have about forty more. No, maybe a little. Let's see. I finished row forty nine of this certain section, and it goes until row one thirteen, one fourteen. So you know, sixty four more rows to go. Um, in the or what did I say? Whatever. It doesn't matter. That's how much I have left <laughs> to the bottom. It's supposed to be a longer um, cardigan. And then I'll have the sleeves to do. But the sleeves do not have cables on them. They're quite simple, so they should go pretty quick. The thing that's just annoying is the there is alter, uh, alternating skeins. If you just have to do it. But this is my Vanity Fair colorway. 
it's all crumpled from my bag, but anyway, it's coming along. I will finish this in January and be able to wear it, but right now it's just kind of waiting a little bit. But I do, I pick it up and I do a few rows almost every day. Um, but the rows are long, so I don't do very many at a time. But it's still, it just is amazing how just doing that, it really just keeps, keeps growing. Yeah. Keeps going. Slow and steady. We've talked about that. Okay. So I told you I had a whole bunch of this yarn. So Michael's craft store, they every now and again have like $5 mystery grab bags. I never feel like I want to ever take any of those because I don't need to get a whole bunch of random things that I don't know what to do yes, with or I'm agreed. not going to use. I want to have things that I buy specific for projects or, you know, that I know I'm going to use. Um, but I could tell that these bags held yarn and I was going to be teaching a fiber arts class this next semester. Lots of things have changed, obviously, since then. So I thought, you know what? I'll get two bags. I mean, they're obviously a lot of yarn. I'll get two bags. It'll be cheap yarn so that we have something to use. And then we'll just see what's in there. And I opened it up and went, what in the world? All bulky. That's actually really hard to learn with. Bulky mm -hmm. yarn is hard, I feel like, when you're first learning. And I thought, that's not going to work. It's good for that. seeing, but not for yeah. handling. So... Then I had all of this yarn. I thought, what am I going to do with that? I mean, a lot of it. And I was thinking I could make a blanket, but I don't really want to make a blanket. I, could, I don't know. And then I was going to just give it away. And then Amy, um, she's Noble Character Crafts. She showed on a podcast a couple months ago a basket that she had made. And I was like, I love that basket. And then she pulled out the yarn. And guess what yarn it was? It was the same yarn. And so she used a tutorial on YouTube called Bulky Crochet Basket with Handles by CJ Design. So I went and watched that and that was kind of my jumping off point for figuring out what I wanted to do. I tried a lot of different variations and have done pretty much what that tutorial said, but on the top I do handles differently and I did a crab stitch on the top edge and I made like six or seven and I have a picture of some of them that I made. This one has been sitting in my bag all squished up so it's really deformed but what I had my husband do is cut these felt um, circles that are the size of the base that I glued into the bottom. This one's obviously not glued in but so that it would have some some support and structure to it so that if you don't have that and you fill it up, then you can end up with just a really floppy basket. And I did not want to do a really tight gauge. I made one that was a tight gauge, killed my hands, so I didn't want that. So Emily has one, yep. hers has a base glued into it and it's got handles and the edge has a crab stitch. So that's what I did on mine on all of them. So I have enough to make more, but I think I'm just gonna finish this one. Um, and then maybe make more hats with the others because they just, the hats are fabulous. I like the hat that I made mm -hmm. with that same yarn. I love the basket too. So, anyways, I had plans of making, you know, 20, 30. Everybody gets a basket for Christmas. But <laughs> after the seventh or eighth one, I was like, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. <laughs> so, I'm actually, once I finish this round, I'm ready to start the handles and then do the crab sh stitch. It's seven rounds up, then the handle round, and then the finishing edge stitch. You know what I like? I like project bags for most things because they're the kind of thing where you pick it up and you stick it in your, your other bag or you toss it in your car or whatever, and it's enclosed and everything, and it's good for on the go. But the thing I love about this basket is it's really great for the kind of and I've got a project like this in here that's got lots of little bits, like little elements, mm -hmm. you know? So like for making that little pig where you've got all these little feet and you've got all these different yarns you're working with and that kind of thing. It's really nice because in your project bags, all your little elements can tend to get buried in yeah. the bottom. Whereas this one, they all tend to be there so right the kind of here. Thing. Put it next Perfect. to you on a little table, side table, whatever, while yeah, you're working. Yeah, it's but. great. 
I mean, it was fun that I had lots of different colors. I had plans with all of the scraps at the end to mm -hmm. do like the top, like a band and a different color. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to get to that point because <laughs> maybe I'll come back to that later. We'll see. Yeah. But, you know, I make a whole bunch and then I hit my saturation level. Kind of like with your pumpkins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So if you watch on Instagram, redhead hostess123, all of a sudden I just forgot. Can we look it up? Yeah. She has taken my sugar pie pumpkin pattern to a new level. I thought I had made a lot. And then I met a friend in Carson City, Nevada that had made, I think, as many as I had made, maybe more. And then, <laughs> see, hmm. just a minute. Let me go. Okay. Let, let me look up. Of... Just one second. That's I'm just going to look, look up, up the sugar baby or sugar pie pumpkin here be on the hashtag oh please it's something else I'm be on the hashtag <laughs> i heard something completely <laughs> different and i don't even want to say well i don't know what it was but sure you know me and my potty now <laughs> oh my word it was um sugar baby pumpkin. that's what i was i was putting in the wrong one Baby pumpkin, I can't. <laughs> it's because we're all the watching pressure, each other. The pressure. the pressure, hurry up. Do it faster. Okay, I'm not going to even tell you what it is. Okay, redhead31126. That's Lindsay. She has taken this. She made a whole bunch of pumpkins. I'm going to tap Oh, which one, one are you going to? Okay. I was going to start with her first one. Then oh, yeah. she had an idea to make. You probably need to turn. Oh, no, you can To make one. them into a <laughs> snowman. So cute. Really cute. And she used some of that like eyelash yarn to give it some fluffy texture. And then she's like, well, why stop there? I'm gonna make a gingerbread <laughs> snowman. I mean, how cute is that? Well, she didn't stop there. Then she made a peppermint snowman. <laughs> how creative. She's oh, she so also cute. sells these really cute um, uh, what's the name of this type of material? Not acrylic. Um, Sorry, I don't know what you're actually saying. These really cute notebooks that are, are like resin? this resin, okay. resin with glitter and Disney themed stuff. Anyways, I got off topic there, but really <laughs> cute, really cute. But yeah, so, the baskets, we were talking about just how you knit in batches. Yeah. So she, she has now officially knit, I think the most out of anyone of that pattern. <laughs> That's really fun. Super fun. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, this is my last work in progress right now because I have a whole yeah. bunch of other stuff I have to still catch and cast on, but this is where I am right now. So I want to just first preface this by saying this is a spoiler. So for anybody who is, is participating in the Imagined Landscapes Adventure Gnome Knit Along, if you are not caught up with your clues, don't look. If you are caught up with your clues, I'm actually behind, so it won't be a problem. But if you are participating and you're not caught up with your clues, you're going to want to like, you know, skip use that double tap bit. skip thing to skip ahead. So my friend, one of my lovely friends, we did, um, Deborah and I in our little group that we talked about, our pink ladies, we did um, an advent exchange this year where we made advents for each other. And they have been so just like the nicest thing ever. I haven't opened mine today. I'm so I haven't excited either. To I know. It. <laughs> so one of the things that my friend um, gave me was this subscription to this knit along, along with the yarns to make it. And it's um, very simple clues. You make just do little bite sizes of knitting each day on it, and the, you end up with a gnome at the end of the of the month or the the process. <gasps> And here is the gnome's little hat. <laughs> That's the cutest hat ever. With this little puffy bobble at the top. <laughs> Isn't that colors. adorable? So if you look at my tree, my tree is all gold and cream and pink and Peaches. and um, kind of burgundy. Mauve. And so she gave me colors that go with that. Here's the, the gnome's little nose. Oh, oh I'm sorry. sorry. Like, I'm trying to help and I don't help. And beard. <laughs> it's little curly nose and beard. And these are the colors that I am using. And actually, you know what? 
I was supposed to use this color to do the little bobble according. I mean, it doesn't matter because, but it just said color three instead of color four. Mm -hmm. And I had picked this one to be color three. So in the end, it won't really matter. It'll be fine. And then this cream one, I've, I've balled up all the cream, but, um, <laughs> this yarn, this set, and I have, I have two of these, um, two minis in each. They're 10 gram minis. They are from Sun Valley Fibers and the gold is called Golden Harvest. The kind of mauve pink is called Cactus Blossom. And then this raspberry is called like, uh, it was Bing Cherry. I always think of this as kind of a cranberry. It, it's looking a little redder in the camera. In the camera. It's, it's got more it's of a, a cranberry. Yeah, definitely. Cranberry. And then the cream color is called something else. Cream is, I'm just throwing cream things. color in the stripes? Because that's a pale. It's called pink. whisper. This well, like it's a, a pink. It's kind of a champagne. It's the same as this. It's yeah. like a champagne color kind of. And it's called whisper. Or even oatmeal. Like just Oh yeah. Yeah. Very pretty. It's the set is gorgeous. And my friend Renee picked it out specifically because she knew that I loved those colors for my Christmas tree. And it does, it just goes so well together, but it's just fun. So, so far, I mean, this is three days worth of clues just for the little hat. You know, mm -hmm. you, you start it and then you do the middle part and then we do the little bo bobble. So it's not an overwhelming It's very project. little bite size. And then there's the little mustache and nose was one of the days. And, um, and in between, and there's only 12 clues. And so the rest in between, there's a little, a story about this little gnome who, by the way, her the, the gnome's name is Nutmeg with a G at the beginning. That's one thing I like. Anything that starts with an N actually is G-N. Yes, in all her little stories. It is the cutest thing ever. Every day I get so excited to get my little clue and there's been a recipe, there's been you know, different stories that are, you know, a continuing story with little um, installments about nutmeg. And it's just so charming and delightful and just a joy and not a pressure. You know, sometimes when you're doing like the mystery knit alongs and th or, or advent projects, they feel kind of like a burden. Not they don't like you enjoy them. You want to do them, but you like kind of get stressed out if you get behind. And I'm not stressed out because even if I got five days behind, I could still sit down in one day and just catch up really fast um, yeah, it's with not... all the clues. And so it's just like such a fun, fun project. That was so, very thoughtful. So and thoughtful. And she said that Sun Valley Fibers was such a joy to yes. work with because she mm -hmm. was back and forth communicating trying to find just the right colors the right amount yeah. the right, like everything and and um that they just had fantastic customer service yep absolutely and and she said the same thing about the designer so yes, the, right. they were just lovely and i love that yarn it's a, a merino cashmere nylon mcn blend so it is it's luscious. Very nice. For it is a, a it is a ritzy little gnome. You know, it's so cute. It's and some I bling found, or something. Here's the other thing. I found out yesterday that Tannen collects gnomes, and so she'll probably end up being a gift for Tannen when she's. Oh, I say she. I don't. I can't remember if Nutmeg is a girl or a boy right now on the top of my head. Well, with but those colors look she's kind pink, of girl. So I think she's a girl with her beard. <laughs> I mean, girl knows how beards, right? Sometimes I get a little. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's just so fun. I love it. It makes me happy every day. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for an update on my spring in LA? Sweater? I am. I'm on the sleeves. Just barely. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Deborah. Okay. It is just so soft and oh my goodness heavenly beautiful okay so one of the questions that i had that you had was is it going to look strange having a lace weight cream mohair with a dark color running behind it because it's stranded color work mm -hmm. and i think it's great. i think it's fine um what she says in the pattern is to not catch your floats mm -hmm. because then you will notice it. And with mohair, you know how grabby that can be. And so mm -hmm. I'm 
I'm, every now and again, and I'm just like going through and kind of tapping them together to kind of help kind of them long kind clothes. of. Yeah. Well, I'm not even to the longest one. There's there's mm. a really long one. That one I will absolutely be catching that float, even if it shows through in the front. Mm. Um, but I was knitting this on Magic Loop, and that didn't really work mm. because you'll have long floats on the end of one needle that goes from here to here and trying to get the right length. Mm -hmm. I just had a mess in my gauge. It was such a mess. You can't really see it. It was just a little bit mm -hmm. that I had to switch to. Um, it's, I realized it's big enough. I can do it on a 16 inch circular yeah. cause it's such a big one. And by the time I finish this pattern and it gets smaller, then I can go back to magic loop. If mm -hmm. I want, I won't have, you know, two colors, so it will be fine. I had decided early on that I was not ripping back unless there was a major problem mm -hmm. <laughs> because mohair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I discovered a big problem. I discovered a drop stitch down. I don't know how I got that far without realizing I had a drop stitch. No idea. I just was like, something's off on here. My, like, it's not Your lining camp. up. Mm -hmm. It's not. So I counted and I'm like, I'm, I'm off. How did that happen? And I went down and found that. And so I just put it on a stitch marker, progress keeper to hold it mm -hmm. while I decided what to do with it. And I'm just going to carry it up to the top. You're not going to really notice in the pattern, like it's big, fluffy, mm -hmm. bulky. Like you're not even going to notice. I'm not. So you're going to, so are you going to, you said, are you going to pick it up and work I'm it up to the top? Pick it up, work uh -huh. it up to the top yeah. to there. And it will kind of mess up the color work a bit. But like I said, I don't really care. It will be okay. But I just set it aside when I figured that out for a bit. Um, Ooh, but is this dreamy. is one I have to really focus on because mm. since I'm not catching floats, I have to make sure tension stays fine and mohair, it's more finicky. I have to just focus 100% on this. Mm. So it gets very little work, but so pretty this and is going to be one of those things where you finish it and you are yeah. going to be like i can't believe i made this yeah, i you know like you're just going to love it so well much. the second i saw it on instagram i just was like i gasped out loud like oh, that's the sweater i need yeah. so and then i went and dyed yarn contacted the designer and asked <laughs> when's the pattern coming out i've like, already dyed the yarn <laughs> So I did do the sleeve, the cuff differently. Hers was a rolled cuff so that it would kind of disappear so that the sleeve, you just had kind of that on it. But I, I like mm. ribbed cuffs, so I did that. Um, but because I did ribbed cuffs, it kind of changed how I start the, um, start the pattern because you have some increases in there. And I hope I took good notes because it's going to be a while before I get to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so it's beautiful, but this is my long-term project. It's going to The go wonderful slow. thing, though, is as soon as you're done with the color work section on that, then the rest yeah. of the sleeve will not be But the color work section is quite... Oh, that's I don't know. true. It's, it's, I, I may be dramatic, may not be all yeah. the way up to here, but this is like this much of the color, this much of the color work, mm -hmm. and because it a kind of blouses, to go, yeah. and it takes a lot of time for each row that's for me. That's true. But it's okay. It's beautiful. I will love it so much when it's, it's done. Of art. I'll just plug away on it a little bit at a time. So I'm sorry that it's not done <laughs> for, um, I just, I'm so sorry for just forgot your name, the designer. She is such a sweet, sweet woman. Paige, she's so excited to see it done. It's gonna be a long time, but <laughs> Paige is just really a delight. It's a, it's really stunning design and it's true. I, when I saw it too, I immediately thought, oh, that's so Deborah. Yeah, so it's perfect. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, fun. I, okay. That's all I have for right now. Uh, this one's actually not a work in progress. It's going to oh, be have to any show our second. Bags, so. Oh, <gasps> this was another gift. Oh, I put a pom pom on it. This was a gift from a different friend. Look at this bag. It's so, so pretty. So cute. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love and she it. is so smart. She found the these are tea towels that from came Target. in a set from Target with the little. We shouldn't have given away her secret. No, it's brilliant. It is. It is so brilliant because they come. You know how I mean. Target always has yeah. these matching sets. What a smart idea! But not just that. But it's just the right yeah. thickness. Yes. Like yeah, it's just a really great. She's stinking bag. smart. That so, one. 
this was a gift from one friend, this was from another, and from the same friend that this came in was this beautiful hand-dyed yarn. This yarn is hand-dyed using sagebrush from Heber, Utah. Heber sagebrush City. blossoms, I believe it says, doesn't it? I think it? it just said sagebrush. I don't know, I could yeah. be wrong. It's called You're a Daisy If You Do, and this is from her Wild West collection. Oh, I love it, it's so pretty. And I was trying to decide if I was going to dye mohair to match this, but I think I'm just going to use mm -hmm. this and it will just be really soft and I'm mm -hmm. going to knit. I've knit this hat before. It was a labor of love. I'm just gonna say this is the Father, Father Cables hat. And um, the designer, is designers put your name well, in it was your on the front, footer but it put it in your footer so it's on every page i haven't done that on mine i really need to um yoth yarns designed by veronica job joby and it's a unisex hat where you can make it slouchy not slouchy there's different size options it's beautiful i'm gonna knit i am gonna knit this one for claire it, oh it yeah it may not be for christmas but i just feel like that would be luxurious mm -hmm. for her and it would be beautiful for her even if she doesn't need that it'll be it'll want, be a hug for i mom. want to make it for her but it it's a it's a hundred percent focus on every single section kind of pattern so it's going to yeah. take some more time than my brain will allow at night time so it's, i'm going to start that one at some point but that's beautiful that's that'll really be my beautiful. next cast on we're two almost at two hours. hours. You guys, I would say sorry, but you know, you know okay. us by now. Let's take a little bit of a break. Then we're okay. going to do come back and do our kindness is like sugar segment with Emily. <laughs> Okay, change of plans. I really wanted to do our kindness it's like sugar <laughs> segment today because I had something really sweet that happened recently. Um, so a couple weeks ago, I got a text on my phone while I was busy working away and it said, ding dong. I was like, what? what? And so I just responded, what? <laughs> and it was from a friend. She's like, look out your door. So I opened up the door and on my front step was a box of liquid sunshine. So oh. <laughs> I have this drink that I Emily introduced me to that I loved so much. It's Lorena coconut lime something. Um, soda, yeah. Soda mm -hmm. from, it's an Italian soda and we could only find it at this one store and I found out that it was gonna be discontinued. And I was telling my friends, no, no, because mm -hmm. every time I was feeling frustrated in the winter time, because I, you know, winter and me, um, we're like oil and water. <laughs> and so when I was having a hard time, I'm like, I'll just open up one of these precious bottles and I will drink a little bit. And it's like sunshine and like summer again. And when I found out that it was being discontinued, I was so upset. And I drove to a lot of Harmons, couldn't, I found like four and that was it. <laughs> well, a box, a case of them was sitting on my doorstep. <laughs> it said, open one up when you need some sunshine. Mm -hmm. Sweet. My friend purchased these when she found out she went around to Harmon's around her house and asked them to check in the back and and anyway she went and collected a whole bunch and held on to them for me all year for the winter time. That's so extremely thoughtful. <laughs> so, thoughtful. so thoughtful. Not only did she listen when I was saying something really made me happy and then I was sad when it was going to be gone. She took the time to hunt them down, buy them 
hold on to them for a year and then deliver them an hour away from her house. Like that was such a happy moment. And I opened it and my girls, Nadia, she's like, I want some. <laughs> my friend said, tell her she can have a different drink. <laughs> she likes other things. <laughs> she's like, those are just for you. That was the most thoughtful thing. And it really, and I thought if I yeah. ration it out one a week, I can get through February. <laughs> But I've had a really good month, so I'm waiting for January when it's hard. And then you can have two a week. Then I could have on two the bad weeks. weeks. <laughs> on, the, on the really bad weeks, I'll drink yeah. half a bottle. Oh, I'm really excited for that drink. That's so sweet. I mean, just something thoughtful. And she, I mean, she obviously went to effort, but it wasn't like a great expense. And she just, you know, it was a thinking, just thinking of you. I think and... it was a bit of a great expense. I'm just going to say those aren't cheap. <laughs> But I'm, you know, it wasn't hundreds of dollars yeah. for her to her to buy soda. It was, but it was very, oh, just so, so sweet. We have a lot of, mm -hmm. we just know a lot of very kind people and very thoughtful and very mm -hmm. giving and very generous. And we have a lot of viewers who have also been very kind and very generous and sending us little care packages from time to time and little notes and yeah. comments that are really sweet on our podcast and you know, it just, all those little tiny things are a drop in our bucket yep. that fill up our love bucket. And we really appreciate it so much, so much. You know, I think sometimes, and we all know this year especially, that it's easy to just focus on the things that are hard and not going the way you want it to. But mm -hmm. um, both Deborah and I recently um, participated in a challenge to focus on gratitude every day, you know, leading up to Thanksgiving, um, the week leading up to Thanksgiving back in November. And it was, it's not, that's not new information. We know gratitude makes you happier. We well, know that. We, we like to yeah, be thankful, recognize those things. Right. But it was a little bit different. More intentional. Mm hmm More focused. And there were a lot of people doing it all at mm -hmm. once. You know, if you were on social media and you saw the give thanks hashtag during that week, um, November 20th to November 27th. That was part of that. You know, we, we participated in that and it really did make a huge difference. So I was just thinking about that. Like, um, not only did this wonderful friend do such a kind thing, but you are grateful for it. And you didn't let that get buried in other things that aren't as rosy as you would yeah. like, you know? Yeah. And so there's something about that. I think if you're struggling to find those things, to just take time and jot down something at the end of every day, jot, jot, jot down something good, something, even if it's a tiny little thing, you know? We um, have, we at dinner time, we do something called our three things. It's time mm -hmm. for our three things. Mm -hmm. And we always start out by saying that I am a child of God because mm -hmm. we want to remember our divine uh, heritage and to remember how we should be acting as such and then also then we will say something good about our day and something good about ourselves mm -hmm. and so um, I started doing that because I would hear just too much negativity too mm -hmm. many complaints all the time I thought let's let's focus on something else and sometimes it can be really hard there are times where I see a great internal struggle with different people at different times trying to find something good about themselves to mm -hmm. say. And there are some times where they can't come up with something and that's when we each come up with something for them mm -hmm. that's good about them. Um, and I, we all really like that part of the day. Mm -hmm. I, I really look forward to that. And so we actually start looking for things throughout the day like, oh, what am I going to share tonight, yeah. you know? We actually had a really similar experience. Deborah was in California for Thanksgiving, um, but the rest of our siblings and you know parents, we were able to get together for Thanksgiving and and manage to all be healthy and everything to do that. And um, when we were when we were there, um, my mom started it off with just telling you know some of her favorite things about each of her kids. And Deborah wasn't there, but we did that um, about you, and you didn't get to hear about it. said all nice things, I hope. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was all good. And um, and it was a really bonding. You know, our family is diverse. We have um, different worldviews, different faiths, different political ideas, different um, lifestyles, you know, all kinds of things. And 
And so you'd think that it would be a, ti a, a thing where... Be contentious and right. stressful and... But it isn't. It isn't. Um, even though we don't all agree on everything, we are able to love each other. And it was a really special time. And my brother and his partner weren't able to, like they, they didn't feel comfortable with coming to dinner, but they came and stood on the back deck of my sister's house, my other, our sister Alexis's house where we were having our meal and, um, you know, they, and had their masks on and they were on the deck and we were inside, but we were still able to, to talk a little bit and share our things with him. And where, where it started out, just my mom wanting to say something kind, all of us wanted an opportunity to do that. And it, I mean, we spent probably two hours over wow. the time talking about that. Well, I'm mixed in with other things, uh -huh. but um, it was just really wonderful. So not only the gratitude for things in our lives, but for character traits we see in each other. Love that. It's really good stuff. Well, we've come to the end. So yes. let's see here any shop updates, shop news. Shop news. So um, I, since my our last podcast, I have released my True North socks pattern. And that's the one I showed earlier that I'm knitting for my daughter. But here is the the sample. And um, it's available now in my on my website. Even closer. Thank you. And that is knit in my sock set inspired by Little House in the Big Woods. And this is called Maple Sugar Party. It's a little bit more pink than it's showing. A little bit more. And that yeah. gold is such a beautiful rich gold i love the gold this is what the sock set looks like and it comes with this gold filigree heart charm um if you remember in the book for those of you who've read little house in the big woods um not only do they make maple candy where they pour little curly cues with the maple sugar um but also pa carves a little shelf he calls it a little bracket and he yes. does little curlies on it. And so that's what that is inspired. That little charm is inspired by. So he did I, that for Ma's mm -hmm. porcelain doll, right? Yep, her, her um, shepherd. I think, wasn't she a shepherdess? I don't her remember. Her porcelain shepherdess. Anyway, and so I have these sock sets in my, in my, on my site right now. And I also have my winter in the big woods sets available. And those come with a charm that's got an acorn and an oak leaf and a glass green glass bead along with the mini. I'm being Vanna White today. Thank you, Vanna. I feel very accomplished. <laughs> I want you to see that cute leaf. I love that charm. So I have a few of those. I also have some other sock sets, my Pride and Prejudice, or my, um, excuse me, my Jane Austen ones. This is Sanditon. That and, you showed earlier. Yep. And I have, and then I have this one that's handsome enough to tempt me. And there's some others as well. I think I have Most Ardently is still listed and... That one's really pretty. Yeah. Thank really you. Really pretty. They're all very pretty. So look at these all <laughs> lined up. I mean, like these could all be knit into a project. Like they all just oh, yeah, they look could. really nice. So I've got those. I'm also currently having a sale. I was so inspired by Andrea Mowry's most recent pattern release, which is the Fizz Pullover. If you have not looked at that yet, you have got to go look at it. It is just beautiful as this gorgeous lace stripes that go down the sides, front and back, and it's just. I saw that and almost dropped everything to go dye yarn for it. I know. I, went, I need to finish this one. If it wasn't house. Christmas and I wasn't already working on so many other things, I totally would have done that. Yeah, yeah. I think January. The thing is, I don't really wear a pullover. I might turn it into a cardigan because I don't wear a lot of pullovers, mm -hmm. but oh, it's beautiful. Anyway, I was so inspired by that and I was Im immediately thinking of which of my author's colors would I dye, you know, would I dye for that to mm -hmm. make for that. And so I have actually um, put all of my author's line of semi-solid colorways are on sale right now. If you buy a sweater's quantity, which I'm defining as four skeins or more then they're all 20 percent off and so a lot of you have already taken advantage of that and i am working really hard on your orders um but yes just um that is i, I it'll go through at least 
next week that sale will be on and they're all dyed to order and that's something that's really important to me with authors my author's line is because i know that especially when you're ordering these larger skeins i know you're putting them all into a project so i want to dye that yarn at the same time so that they go really well together because they're just our variations in hand dyed mm -hmm. yarn and so um they do take a few more days than my in stock things but they're i'm, I'm on it pretty fast so yeah. that's all on sale and as well Love it. I know I was looking through yours like, hmm. I was going to dye some for me, and I thought, Emily has a sale. And then I thought of my Spring in L.A. sweater. And it's like, just work on me, please. Just work on Spring in L.A. <laughs> so, um, I told you that I did the released the ice cream swirl hat pattern. Um, that was a couple weeks ago. But I am currently finishing up. I totally forgot about this one. This is my diamond cowl pattern that I knit this last winter and I was going to do the pattern for and I forgot about that until my friend reminded me. <laughs> so I had my notes and everything ready for it. I just needed to type it up and then have it um, test knit. So I'm just about ready for the test knitting stage. So that will be coming up shortly. I'm going to put this on now. I just wanted you to be able to see the texture and now it's I'm going so to pretty. put it on because I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> so that one is going to be ready and um, I have, I told you before, I've started dyeing yarn from time to time. Um, so I'm not doing large amounts but I will be dyeing some more again and I had a cute peppermint twist colorway that I did earlier but um, I think what I'm going to do is if people have a special request of a colorway that you're interested in that I have dyed before, you know, any colorway except for mini sweet shop. Um, that one, I'm, I think that one, I'm not doing that one. That was a limited run. <laughs> Sometimes they are just too labor intensive. <laughs> so late. And then I decided, oh, I'll do some more. And then I was like, this is why I decided not to do the, <laughs> I love them. So if you're interested in one, um, go ahead and contact me because I would much rather, you know, I prefer to dye the yarns that you're interested in than mm -hmm. dye something that you're not as excited about so yeah. that my efforts that go into the things that you're most interested in. That's my shop news. That's awesome. Oh, and one last thing I have to say is that if you're following me on Instagram, Yarnbrary, um, on Instagram or on Facebook, then you've been seeing my advent colorways being released. I kind of, I, I show them the day after that people would open them. That has been so fun because Elf was just like the best theme. I have it one of so those fun. advent colorways. <laughs> yes, it was so fun. So anyway, you should come and come and follow me and see all the pictures. It's very fun. All right, well, it's going to be Christmas soon. Hope everybody is just having a really good holiday. Mm -hmm. If you're at home and isolated, there are so many ways that you can connect with people mm -hmm. and have a good time. So just go and create the moments that you need. You know, mm -hmm. you can't always wait for them to happen. We have to create them. So. Yeah, absolutely. Merry Christmas. Bye.